So, so JP, you know I know you, right? No, you know of me. Go ahead. No, okay. Say what you want. But JP, you the same one that was talking bad about married men and how they simps and how they were no good and all this and that. Remember that? Y yeah. So now your tone has changed, huh? Because you Be put a ring on it. Because I felt like I had to listen to y'all conversations over and over and over and over. I said, it, it got me curious and intrigued. So I said, let me step into these uppity nerd niggas realms and dominate over there too. Since I'm dominating these niggas in the pookie world, let me come on to the uppity merry man world and dominate. I managed to get a woman to do what I want her to do. I managed a woman, she, she got her degrees and all this other type of stuff. And she came over there, put that to the side to work up out of my business. Let me, let me, let me, let me come over there and show this. And, and then, JR, I don't know if you know, but me and that woman, when, when I speak about my hot dog car, right? But me and that woman went to the council meeting because they were trying to take my hot dog cart and food trucks and, and say that we can't sell in the city. Me and that woman, we went up to the council meeting and fought and we won together. We in the newspaper and they got a video of us. And, and because of us, because of us, now everybody that want to come to this city with like a vendor, try to sell food and stuff, because of us, they will be able to, to do that. So, so J -J it was good we, stuff that comes with Congratulations to all those accomplishments. But, dog, let, let, let's keep it all the way honest, dog. You used to shit on married men. And one more thing. Why do men, I hear a lot of, because they always trying to say, all oh, these women would get with these pookies and ray-rays. It, it seems like on one breath, y'all saying, y'all trying to shame these women for getting with pookies and ray-rays. But on another breath, y'all say that y'all are men and y'all like to compete. So since since y'all are dr dramatically losing when it comes to getting women between the Pookies and Ray Rays, you want to shame the competition. What's up with that? Don't forget the corporate Pookie now. Yeah, you do have corporate Pookies. All I wanted to say, you know, I mean, I'm the lower class man and I ain't never had these results out of women like this stuff that y'all be talking about. I never had a woman try to act like an alpha. In real life, when I'm dating women, we don't have these conversations about none of this. No alpha. A lot of women didn't know what hypergamy was. I come ask them, I was like, do you believe in hypergamy? She's like, they're like, what the hell is that? I didn't know what the hell that was till I came on air. I, I, I can understand that we probably didn't have the language for certain for certain stuff, but at the same at the same time, when I get with a woman, it people it just fall in place. She act like a woman, I act like a man, and you might have some bumps in areas where you know she get a little lippy and stuff. But I always say that I like a woman to you know speak her own mind. I don't I don't want to be solely dominant over a woman. I don't want no woman that I control her thinking. But JR, why are you word, doing that? Word, JR. I was about to say the same <laughs> thing. Like, word, bro. <laughs> what happened? You're doing really loud. Oh, y'all can hear that? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you chewing, man. I'm like, what is he eating? Because I want some. <laughs> but I have a question. So, Jay, like, did somebody call you a, a pookie? Or do you consider yourself a pookie? No, they I, when I first came up here, they was calling me Pookies and Ray Rays. Because you I have was, three kids? Yeah, I had a lot of baby mamas and stuff like okay. that, and kids, you know. And just my life upbringing. Mm. Okay. Well, I ain't going to say he a Pookie, but he definitely Pookie-ish. <laughs> hey, it seems like if, if I was a baby and I had to look at the uppity men and the Pookies and Ray Rays, especially when it comes to dating, I will, I will yield more towards the Pookies and Ray Rays. Cause it seemed like the man that's the uppity man is not winning in that area. I have a question. What's the uppity man? The uppity man is like a lot of these dudes that come on here and they feel entitled because they got degrees. Cause they was lied to when they, they was lied to when they, when it was coming up saying that if you get your education, you could uh, complete your goals. A woman just going to fall right in your lap. Just like, like butter beans. 
And when she see when they end up seeing them the women do not fall in their hands and they meet and they they rather date either a white nerd over the black ones or Pookies and Ray Rays over them. Now the shaming tactics started coming. Now they got so much resentment for Pookies Ray Rays. And we and Pookies Ray Rays don't even know that these men even exist. Like we, they don't have no ill malice towards these dudes, but yet these men will always come on these platforms talking about them. All I'm saying is, at some point you got to go out there and get the re try to get the results and change your problem. A, a lot of these dudes they never experienced these women. A lot of these dudes they come on here they have a lot of conversations. I'm I'm I get it. It's, it's good conversation. But go out there and get some experience. I find out there's a lot of men that's not don't even have experience even living with a woman. A lot of men don't have even have experience even raising have kids nor raised them, raising them and raising them with a woman. But they would come on here. How can you talk about something you're not going through? You can't talk out of ignorance like that. How you gonna come on here at this point, especially when you do it for so long? At this point, it look like you just a problem. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, you, you it's going to look like you the problem. It's not the woman. I, if I ask these men, when was the last time have they dated any one of these women that, that perpetrated any any of these character traits? When Last time they was with them, either probably would have been a long time ago, years ago, or they never even experienced it. Oh no, I'm just saying. What do y'all think about that? I want to hear y'all thoughts on that. So, so JP, you know I know you, right? No, you know of me. Go ahead. No, okay. Say what you want, but JP, you the same one that was talking bad about married men and how they simp's and how they were no good and all this and that. You remember that? Y yeah. So now. Your tone has changed, huh? Because you Be put a ring on it. Because I felt like I had to listen to y'all conversations over and over and over and over. I said, it, it got me curious and intrigued. So I said, let me step into these uppity nerd niggas' realms and dominate over there too. Since I'm dominating these niggas in the pookie world, let me come on to the uppity merry man world and dominate. I managed to get a woman to do what I want her to do. I mean, it's the woman, she she got her degrees and all this other type of stuff. And she came over there, put that to the side to work up out of my business. Let me, let me, let me, let me come over there and show this. And, and then, JR, I don't know if you know, but me and that woman, when, when I speak about my hot dog car, right? But me and that woman went to the council meeting because they were trying to take my hot dog cart and food trucks and, and say that we can't sell in the city. Me and that woman, we went up to the council meeting and fought, and we won together. We in the newspaper, and they got a video of us. And, and because of us, because of us, now everybody that want to come to this city with, like, a vendor, try to sell food and stuff, because of us, they will be able to, to do that. So, so J -J it was good we, stuff that comes with Congratulations to all those accomplishments. But, dog, let, let, let's keep it all the way honest, dog. You used to shit on married men. Yeah, and and and, and I for, still for, do for years. You used to shit on that. Talking about marriage, not, who I'm, wants to get married? Only get married. That's that's bullshit. You know, nobody needs to do. But he, I'm not the one gonna be in a losing position though. I'm not gonna let him and her get divorced today. I'm not losing nothing. She came. She put her degrees to the side to come second. She sacrificed not only. She moved from cross East Coast to the Midwest to be with me. That's one. Then she sacrificed her singleness and her youth to help me raise my kids and to help me. You see, we go live every weekend when we selling our hot dogs and chicken wings, lemon pepper with the buffalo garlic. She there with me every step of the way. She put her own degrees to the side when y'all say that black women do not do that, especially when they get degrees. Y'all was sitting up here earlier saying when black women get degrees, they get to start fighting men back and forth, fighting men back and forth. Well, this I, my pookie Ray Ray ass managed to outdo that. Not 
managed to find a woman and, and, and could not do that? How come the bottom of the bottom of men can get a woman? Maybe the woman that y'all fantasize about might not be you. I think a lot of these men been turning down women of who they really are because they got this idea, this fantasy of this perfect woman who out the bam, and that might not just be you. That might not be who you really are. Because attractive people attracted to attractive people. JR, ask these men last time they had a woman living with a woman. You can't continue blaming women. That's a fact, Jack. I agree. I started off by blaming women every day. So I still you? blame them for certain stuff, but I, I blame my real life experiences. Experiences that I don't really went through with them. These men be either talking about somebody else's experience or some stuff since they mad because they at home single as, as heck. They single all outdoors and I just they just want to blame women because they don't have the, the enough swag the, or enough talent to, to be able to persuade a woman to get on their program. A woman's just not going to just hop on your program just because you, you got a degree or you achieved some goals. No, you got to... What happened to characters? Or women still going to be attracted to the personality and character of the man. Period. You're not entitled to no woman because you graduated from uh, uh, Harvard. Who says that, though? But the way these men keep talking about they they talk as if since they got degrees... No, and, they, and they, they 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 put them they classify themselves as high value yeah, I think based on their income. I think JP, you conflate in two different things. No, when men talk about going and getting your money up and all of that, that's just all they're simply saying is if you ain't getting like that's a solution to a problem if you're not getting women, and all of us can admit if you got more money in your pocket, that does bring more women now. How, the quality of women, we don't know. But it does, any man can say, I, I I was able to get more women with money than I was without money. We we know that's when he went, and we ain't talking about just no groupies, right? I'm not talking about, no, I, no, I'm, I'm talking about saying, getting a woman to love you and sacrifice for you. Why yeah, most men, pookie, the question is, why? how come my pookie and Ray Ray butt managed to find a woman to sacrifice for me? And y'all and y'all said these high figures, high value six figure plus men cannot find that. But nobody, nobody says that uh, your money is gonna get a woman to love you. Nobody ever says that. Who have you heard say that? I, I would love to know who you heard said that specifically. That JR, hey, with JR, money you can get a woman to tripping? have that. Always have been the plight that no a man, man. That make it six figure plus gets the women high value men. No, he can pull women, but he does you can't. We all know that money don't make a woman love you. We you know that. JR knows that. I know that. Luis knows that. Hell, Balance and Chanel know that. So why is these men not getting no men, no, no, no woman to love them? That's not the solution. That wasn't the solution to the problem. That, that's what they're complaining about is that women don't love. But they never said get your money up so a woman will love you. They said okay. get your money up so you can get women. Okay, so what's so what's been the argument then? Not the argument seems like a switch. <laughs> the same thing you complained about women. A woman natural traits just is something that you're never gonna change. I think that I think that men should stop just competing with men, with, with uh women and just compete for their own. Actually, if you want me to be real blunt and being honest and just be all the way thorough, when it comes to black men, right? And I'm not simping for no black woman. I guess that black woman too. Is it beyond like the realm of possibility that you just like don't happen to find a good woman? No, no. Hold on, one Sweeney. All of this, if, if, if we're going to say up. what a woman is attracted to, protection and provision, right? Black women ought to be grateful that a woman give her, him a, a look. Because let's talk realistically, black men, you not protect. You can't protect no black woman. What's up with that black woman that got shot down by that cop? What's got? She didn't have no man. What's got to do with us? Do You're not protective. When when she, black, she didn't have a oh, man. JP. Real quick, I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish. When black women need pampers and stuff to provide for their children, I'm talking about the needy black women. She can't go to black men for provision. She got to call the she other racist her. men. She got your no, racist women got to call. Hold on, hold on, one, because this is a conversation that y'all don't bring up. 
why Come black on, women KD. don't respect black men. Hold on. And I'm not sipping. I'm calling like it is. Oh, if you, 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 you want to say that black women oh, you hold, hold on mic, one thing. You, you got to pass the mic, though, brother. You got to okay, pass real the quick, mic. Let me just say this because I want to hear what y'all got to say about this. When your race of women have to go to another race of men for provision and protection, how then you going to complain that she don't, she's not submissive to you? What? Let me. Any time a woman gets into trouble, the first person she calls is the the the, the next closest man to her, which is normally no, nine times out of ten. Ray Ray's because we're gonna one gonna risk going to jail. Hey, you what? Don't a black no, man? No, you can't take our because y'all don't like Pookie's and Ray Ray's, right? So you can't take what the gangsters and the, all them niggas do. Y'all y'all separate yourselves from us. So what I'm saying is. <laughs> What what what, I, what I'm saying what I'm saying is when you talk about the educated black men, right? The black men that did all this good stuff for you for for themselves and stuff like that. You you cannot you you don't protect your women. They can't call you for provision. Which one for is none it, bro? Yes, huh? they can. They they what do you think of? Hold on, wait. Let me explain it to you this way. Think of it this way. This is one of the biggest problems with black folks who do out earn most of the people in their family. And this is a black and as a black man and a black woman issue. And I'm sure anybody on this panel that makes over a hundred and some thousand dollars find themselves being asked for a lot by their family members. And so, in fact, they have, they often say, "Man, I got to help out my cousin over here," or they got family members borrowing money from them all the time, or they're the ones that you the you the person that pays for most of the family reunion. You the person that that helped grandma out when when the when the uh you had to buy the truck to help grandma move, or you got to be the one that that helps. Keisha over there get her shit done, or you the one that they come to. Like that's anybody that out earn, uh, out earns majority of their family members find themselves in that position. Yes, they do help. They help all the time. In fact, they're normally the only ones footing the bill for a lot of shit. I disagree because because a lot of times those dudes move way far from them family because of, of that factor. They that's don't want to be the one that they called on. Ask any JP, how much? Just ask. Just uh, you. Do you make over hundred thousand dollars a year? Not yet. Do you know anybody in your family that make over hundred thousand dollars? Yes, a year? he moved. He we he moved way to Texas because niggas was in the family was asking for money. Exactly my point. But but look, but but what I'm what I'm saying is he that don't mean he was giving it. Yeah, he was because you don't get mad until you till you start losing money. If you just keep telling everybody no, you can tell people no till you blow in the face. You move away because you get tired of telling people yes. Man, I'm tired of helping. I'm tired of doing all of this, man. I don't have this kind of money to be supporting my whole entire family. I can only support me and mine's right here, but I got cousins over here asking me for money. I got grandma over here asking me for the money. I'm paying for this over here. I'm the one that everybody go to every time there's a funeral. Is there some money that need to be raised? That's literally the point. that They complain about it all the time. Louise, is, is, have you truly experienced that? I have experienced that. Have you what about seen you, Hank? <laughs> yes, yeah, so in the movie Soul Food, she was the one that out earned everybody in the family. They literally went to her for everything, and she was her, her cousin was dicking her over. Everybody was fucking her over in the family, but she was the one footing the bill for everybody. Yes, people who earn the most in their family tend to wind up taking care of everybody around them, or the expectation is there. They do it all the time, and, and watch when your business jump off and you start making that kind of bread, you're gonna experience the same problem. Wait until you finish school and they still calling you. You haven't even landed the job yet. Right. They they be asking, you ain't even graduate college yet, and they already expecting you to that's why <laughs> that's why that's why I believe black when it comes to, to the black race, we don't got no uh set structure. Like when we see the Mexicans, they not sitting up here having these conversations. They all getting it together and they own all the apartments in the block, they own all the food trusts that niggas will laugh at, right? Because Y'all would laugh at a man like me with hot dog carts and food trucks, but those Mexicans, they they understand this money because they're not trying to get this uh, recognition. When I see a lot of stuff in black people, they more of a status. They be trying to get status and try to get looked at like they some god or some stuff, and they not even that. And when I look at uh, Asians, Asian when an Asian woman get rich or whatever the case, or an Asian man, they, it's still, they still on the same team. What I'm really trying to say, everybody, that whole family, you might have some one-offs, couple one-offs, but primarily 
how they be taking over stuff and what make Mexicans so powerful, what make Asians so powerful, what make the Jews so powerful, what makes whites so powerful, because they have a unity and a, and, and, and a unity of, first off, the brain, they, they on the same page darn near, right? But when it comes to black people, I believe this, you believe this, this is my home. I don't give a care what's going on with me and my home and all this other. I don't got time for these people to be asking me for $20 and $30. For all of us no alcohol every goddamn week. Uh, man, so, Dre Prince, that's not true. That's how a lot of people wind uh, up losing all their money and their family. Like when all these people, you see the black family with a whole bunch of people living in there? And what does everybody that have to do with the job. price of tea in China? Huh? What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? No, but no, no, what I'm what I'm saying is that that give credence on how black people think. You're not successful by yourself. Black people don't look at themselves like a unit or a collective. Y'all look at yourself. How many people live in your house? For y'all, for black people to be at the bottom of all races, you're not in the position to be thinking independently. Bro, we're literally the first ones. Like, how many people live in your house? We're literally the first ones to offer our houses up to people. When grandma's sick and she ain't got nowhere to go, they move. They normally move them into the house. When your cousin nah, moves their house, I know what he's saying. They come, they go stay with other saying. family members. No, when I first, my first experience with seeing how that community works was right after college and I moved to Illinois, got into the apartment complex and my whole, like my building, it was a lot of Mexicans. It was, they had, they would have a four bedroom apartment. It'd be eight couples. Each couple had a bedroom. They, it was two cars. They sharing cars. After about a year or two, everybody had cars. Then all of a sudden, Chiquita bought a house. One couple moved out, bought a house. Like that's like five years I watched that. And I was like, damn, all of them got houses now and each cars. But they was building families and they was staying together. Our community, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'd be like, no, nah, this is my, I'm, I, I work too hard for this. So this is mine. You know, that's how it, we see it. And we don't last that long. So I see what you're talking about. Group economics, man. That's the, really the key is group ep economics. I, I shared this story before. So so up in Lynn, Massachusetts, I, I met this um, this uh, this Mexican dude and him and a couple of his friends. And he told me his story. You know what I'm saying? He told me he grew up in Mexico. He grew up very poor. He came to the States, him and two of his other friends, right? And they came illegally and then they were, you know, getting their papers and stuff like that. But when they got here, they worked like three jobs, all of them. They lived in a three bedroom apartment. Each one had a room and they all worked. They, they were barely there. They just all worked, all three different jobs. But you had three people bringing in six, um, three incomes each, right? It's a lot of money coming into one same household. So after a while, one of them got into a relationship and he brought in a girl. And then when she came in, she took care of everything. She cooked, she cleaned, she prepped everything, and they just worked. She just stayed home and she took care of that. Some time went by, the other dude did the same exact thing. You know what I'm saying? He had a girl. They didn't even work. They both just stayed at home. And then both of them, they had, uh, they had construction equipment and they started working construction. They started making more money, and then slowly, surely, they started elevating. They had bought the house that they were staying at. They bought the house that they were staying at, and they were all living on that one one floor level. And they rented the rest. One of them was getting serious about starting a family. One person moved out. They moved up onto the second floor. Same follow suit until all three of them had their own had their own wives, their own person, and they all lived on each floor. All shared the same vehicles, all that stuff, right? He like broke it down to a whole science to me what he did. And then they took out the equity out of the house, bought one of them, you know, one of them who bought the house for the first guy who got married and he moved out. Then they followed suit, did the same thing. And then they just kept that asset that just keeps on generating cash flow. Yes. They already paid out the house, right? But not all of them have houses, right? Mind, and mind you, these dudes that had their highest level of education that they finished was probably in the ninth grade. The ninth grade is the highest level of education they probably finished. Some was probably as middle school. So 
Uh, but they were willing to, you know what I'm saying, like stick it together and work together and just share everything, share expenses. There was none of that. But it, 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 it's a, I will say this. I'm not saying it's for everybody and everybody's completely different, but it's definitely a cultural mindset. Exactly. Imagine that we bought a three. 